There's some misconceptions about making a domain change in Webflow. Generally, when a client comes to me and says, hey, I'm looking for a, to make a domain change, they think that you have to write 301 redirects for every single URL in your Webflow website, and that's just simply not true. Now, say in WordPress, for example, what you'd have to do is you'd have to open up your HT access file, and then you'd have to write a redirect from your old domain to your new domain. Webflow does that for you. They make it super simple. So. Don't overcomplicate it. Uh, I'm gonna show you the exact process and I promise it's very simple. October 18th is the day we made the domain change and as you can see, traffic has not dropped one bit since then. So let's talk about before making the domain change. First thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna download a backup. Now generally Webflow creates backups for you but you can also go in and export the code just as a safety precaution. Next, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take a screenshot of all your analytics platforms, or at least make note of how the traffic is performing before making the domain change. You can do this in Google Analytics, Google Search Console, Adobe Analytics, or whatever other analytics platform you choose. It really just matters how your traffic is performing before so that if traffic changes after making the domain change, you know why the change happened. Next, you're gonna to wanna to go into the Webflow Designer and change any internal links that are pointing to the old domain. Now, most of your links in the Webflow Designer will be just fine, but there's an option to type out the specific link. And if you've done that for any of your links and they're pointing to the old domain, you'll wanna change those over to the new domain. It's not gonna be the end of the world if you leave a couple here or there, but just at, again, as a safety precaution, it's just smart to be able to show Google and any of the users on your website that the links are pointing to the new domain rather than the old domain. You'll also wanna make sure you don't publish these changes out until you've made the domain change. Next, you can add a canonical URL in Webflow. If you don't have one already, that's okay. You can add a new one of your new domain. You'll wanna make sure that the HTTPS and the WWW are the exact same as how the new domain is gonna show once published, because if that's wrong, it's gonna create some wonky signals to Google and it might be a red flag that something's wrong. Next, you wanna go in and update any of your custom code that is pointing to your old domain. This includes schema markup and any third-party plugins. Now again, the third-party plugins are probably gonna be okay if you leave the old domain. Generally, those third-party plugins aren't actually looking for the domain, but really they're just using that as a name to how they're gonna integrate uh, the plugin to the Webflow site. But I usually go through and just do it as a safety precaution and change all those over to the new domain just to be safe. My recommendation to you when making your domain change is not to make major design changes at the same time. The reason why is because if there's fluctuation in the traffic after publishing your new domain, you're not gonna be able to pinpoint what the reason for the fluctuation was. Was it the design or was it the domain change? And you really wanna be able to pinpoint which it was so that you can go back and revert any changes that need to be made. So I recommend at least, at least a month or two in advance or a month or two after making major design changes so that you can actually keep them separate and that so it doesn't raise any red flags for Google. And that's about it. So let's hop into the actual domain change. Now we're gonna add the new domain into the Webflow settings. It's a really, really simple process. It's not as complicated as people make it seem. So you're gonna go into the Webflow publishing settings and you're gonna add a new domain name. It's gonna be the exact same process that you went through when you originally added your original domain name. Now, what you're gonna do once you're done with this, it's either gonna walk you through the steps within Webflow or it'll make you add some A records and maybe a C name record. Once you've done all that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna change the primary domain from the old domain to the new domain. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that those green check marks are checked before doing that because you don't wanna to redirect to a, a domain that doesn't have the actual site loading yet. So once those green check marks are checked, you're gonna change the domain. Now what you're doing when you make the new domain your primary domain is you're telling Webflow to essentially write a redirect for all your pages on your old domain or any other domains that you have in your account. And you wanna redirect those specific pages to the new specific pages on your new domain. Okay, now that we've published the new domain, listen closely, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna test, you're gonna wanna test again, and then you're gonna wanna test some more. We wanna make absolutely certain that there's no chance Google's gonna penalize us for changing our domain. We want to make sure that Google sees that this was our old domain, this is our new domain, and we're changing it. Well, how do you test? Well, it's super easy. So all you do is you go to an old URL on your old domain, and then it should redirect to that same URL 
on your new domain. So if you go to example.com slash about, it should now redirect to example.us slash about or whatever it is your new domain is. You can also go to the Google search results and search for one of your old pages that are indexed. Now, if you go to five URLs and they're all redirecting correctly, there's almost no reason why the rest of the URL shouldn't work as well, but I like to be safe. So I type in 20, 30, just to make sure that they're all working correctly. And then once I've done that, I move on to the next step. So you might have to get a little bit specific with your search term if it doesn't show up very easily, but you're gonna find the pages on Google search results and you're just gonna click them. As long as they go to the new domain, that new URL that you have, everything should be working correctly. Now, I usually wait a few hours for this next step just to make sure that the website is loading all throughout the world because it can take a little bit of time to spread. Um, but once that's done and ready to go, you're gonna go into Google Search Console and tell it, hey, we've made a domain change. There's actually a tool in Google Search Console that allows you to add your new domain and you tell it, say, hey, this domain is moving to this domain. And once you've done that, you're gonna go through the verification steps. You're also gonna to wanna to add a sitemap and you can also fetch some of the new pages in your new account in Google Search Console to get the ball rolling a little bit to make sure Google propagates these changes so that your old domain isn't showing on the search results anymore, but that your new domain is. It may take a few weeks and maybe even a few months for all the pages to switch over, but slowly and surely they will change over. You can also do this in Bing Webmaster Tools. If you don't have your old domain in Bing, it's not a big deal. You can just add your new one. Don't worry about your old one. But in Google, you wanna make sure you switch your old one to your new one and you tell Google that you're switching. Also make sure to add a sitemap in Bing so they can get a head start on that as well. Then you can go into your analytics platforms, whether it's Google Analytics or whatever other platform you use, and you can change the URL from your old one to your new one. Generally, the analytics are still gonna get tracked even if you don't change them, but it's always a good idea to change it to the new URL just in case. Now we're gonna go on to the final step, which is monitoring. This can take six months to a year or even longer, depending on how big the website is. But the first thing you're gonna do after the domain is changed and everything's good to go, you're gonna find URLs that link to your old domain and change them to your new domain. And I'm talking external URLs on other websites. So the most basic links are gonna be on your social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever other sites you have that link to your old domain, you can go in and change those links to your new domain. Now, it's not realistic that you're gonna go and find every single link on the internet that points to your website and change it to the new new domain. It's pretty unrealistic that that's gonna happen. You probably don't even have the time or the resources to do it, but you do wanna do it for the main link. So social media is most important. Google My Business is also important. Um, if you have any profile directories, you'll wanna go in and change those over, um, in, like business directories like Better Business Bureau, um, Yelp, any of those major ones. You can find some of your main ones by going into Google Analytics and search for referrals. So you can find the URLs that are referring to your website. If those are being tracked, you can also go into Google Search Console and look for external links that are pointing to your website. It doesn't show all of them um, and it doesn't show the domain authority because Google doesn't track that specifically, but it's another way to just find some external URLs. And you can also use SEMrush or Ahrefs to find those links as well. If you have email signatures, you'll wanna change those links over to your new domain, not necessarily for link juice, but more so just to show people that you've changed your domain and you don't wanna be advertising your old domain. And then finally, if you have email addresses, you'll wanna change those over to your new domain. So if your old domain was example.com and now it's example.us, you'll wanna change it from bob at example.com to bob at example.us. Google Workspaces, if you're using that, has an easy way to redirect your old domain to your new domain in terms of your email address. You can also make your new one your primary one, but that takes a little bit longer, so you may just wanna do the redirect for now. It's up to you. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.